and and so this this went on for a long period of time as mm. as the entire piece of music would play you know it would it still would start out at playing different different points um, but eventually it played through the whole thing and and I would I would write down ideas of of what the music was um, because I didn't know how to write music but I could write down you know without without actual note values I could write down what the the melody was mm. and so that's what I did and and I tried to teach myself for several years and I finally came to the realization that I couldn't do that and I got a teacher in 1998 mm -hmm. and so we started working together two hours a week um, which we've done ever since then and when we first started the only time we had in common was at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, I wish I felt sorry for her family, but they seemed to understand. Yeah. And so we would meet at five in the morning um, for a couple of hours every week, and we still do. Wow. We've, we don't do it at five o'clock now, we do it at six. Civilized. So we've, we've, we've got old. <laughs> um, but in, in, in the course of, of learning to play, Mm -hmm. She has helped me to um, to hear what it is that I'm hearing musically, mm. and to be able to write it down. Translation. And and so I, we've been working on that, um, and she's helped me with it. Mm. And and I went through a period of of years of just learning how to play. And with the thought being, I need to learn how to play the music that I've been hearing, and I would like to learn how to play some other things. Mm -hmm. But that always seemed that the, that music was kind of the center focus for everything. Mm -hmm. And I started going to a piano camp in Vermont called the Sonata Adult Piano Camp mm -hmm. in Bennington in 2002 and which was really a nice it's a wonderful experience you go for a week and and everybody there is there because they love to play and it's an old convent and there's a mm. piano in every room and every closet the only rooms that don't have pianos are the bathrooms <laughs> um, so it's pretty neat uh, kind of a place um, and so that that helped me to start to mature a little bit with with playing and and things started really took a different turn again in 2006 when I went to the, that camp in May and met the owner's sister who was a concert pianist and was the um, had been the number one salesperson at Steinway for 10 years she had recently switched to Bosendorfer and she had four or five of her pianos um, there at music camp for people to play. Mm. And we got talking and about the, the, the whole lightning experience and because I was playing things that were that should have been way above my level. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it was a bit of a curiosity to people that you know, how come you can play this? You've only been playing for five or six or seven years, and and this stuff, you know, we you know we've been playing this stuff all our lives, and and you're playing it at that level, mm -hmm. um, and so you know we would the story of of getting struck by lightning and seemed to have some allure to people because. You know, it was a common joke. People wanted to go out with an umbrella and stand in the lightning <laughs> storm because they want to play like that. Um, but in, in 2006, when I met Erica Vanderlyn Feidner, who was the the lady who uh, was the Bosendorfer representative, she had gone home. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, she lived in Connecticut, and. She, she had a friend who was a psychologist, and she was talking about this guy in upstate New York that had been hit by lightning and had 
had this insatiable desire to play piano. And, and it was a curious story for them. Uh, but the psychologist said, geez, you know, Oliver Sacks is writing a book about people that have had weird experiences like that. And, and the psychologist told her, you know, you should call Sacks' office. So she did. Mm -hmm. and, and that was in May of 2006. And in August of 2006, Oliver Sacks' office calls me on my phone and says, you know, I hear you have an interesting story. Would you, would you come down to New York and, and spend the day talking about it? And I thought, sure, why not? You know, how, how many times do you get a call from <laughs> somebody it. famous like yeah, that? That's it. And, and so I went down in August and I spent the day with him. And he's an incredible man. He has a photographic memory. Really? Yeah. And, and absolutely incredible. And I remember we were talking about something and, and he started to quote a book and he jumped up and he ran to the closet and he starts throwing these <laughs> books out of the way and he finally reaches this book and he opens it right to the page and he hands it to me. And it is word for word what he just said. Amazing. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> And so at that point, I realized this, this is not a regular sort of a guy. Yeah. And so I, I spent a wonderful day with him talking. And then at the end of it, you know, he, he left me with, with some wisdom that changed my life again. And that was, he, say, he looked at me and he said, you know, that piece of music from the dream went through an awful lot of trouble to get here. The least you can do is write it. I love that quote. And and he just, and that was the, that was the last thing he said to me. And and it was so it was such a, just a, a ground shaking, thought, for me. I went home and, and and at night. I spent every hour, that I had that I wasn't working or wasn't doing something. Uh, with the kids, mm. I spent working on that music, and I did that for about seven or eight months. And then in 2007, in my piano camp, I played for them the first version of it. In, you know, it was kind of in a rough draft, mm -hmm. um, and and it was pretty neat. And while I was there at camp. Oliver called me and said, I just wanted your permission to use your story in, in my book. And I thought, okay. Mm. I mean, I, I didn't think there was anything in it that was earth shattering. Um, and he said, and oh, by the way, also, it's going to be in the New Yorker in the July issue. Mm. 